It's not easy. I'm struggling. Is it? I'm struggling. I'm Ooh. glad that people get to yeah. see this because it's not easy. Yeah. Where would I go with this? I need so a commitment. You're doing something me. for me, and I got to do something for you. There you go. Which is just this little commitment. If you want something out of me, I want something out of you. And the last price is always the one that they're going to choose. So the, when you're doing your good, better, and best, you always want to start with your best. That is the ultimate package. Just the one that everybody wants. Yep. And you have to take them down through each and every piece of and that. And really talk through the details on it. Right. Hey, how's it going? It's Tim Brown, and this is the Hook Better Leads podcast. And today I have on Chuck Toki. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you for being on. We're talking about sales role play, you know, different situations, formats, and then we're going to actually give some examples. And we're yeah. going to role play on this podcast. Now, your organization is top rep. Yeah. Can you talk to me about what that is real quick so people know where you're coming from if they haven't seen you before? So Top Rep is a boot camp. It's an intense boot camp. It is not this uh, come to our, our seminar and sit there classroom style, learn, and then try to figure out if you're going to take one or two nuggets home with you. This is a very intense boot camp. Um, you will be there to learn, to, to use what you've learned, to role play what you've learned, and to watch other people. Some of the best in the mm. country will actually be there to role play with you. So you get a chance to see what they do as well. I just chatted with uh, Dan Walrak. Walrak? Yeah. Uh, Mr. $18 million. $18 million. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to be there and role-playing. I mean, like, you're all going to be yeah. role-playing together. You get a chance to watch him, and I'm sure that he'll be in six different groups, mm. and you'll get a chance to watch what he does, yeah. Beast. Absolute beast. So my first question for you is, how often should you be role-playing at your roofing organization? So at a minimum, once a week but you really should be doing it daily. And what we do is uh, we put it into a thing called power hour. It's usually very early in the morning and you work with your team, whether it's through Zoom or if you can bring them in uh, every single morning, but you, you should be having power hour every morning if you can. Uh, but uh, at least doing it inside of your sales meetings. Mm. And uh, so your sales meeting should last about two hours and in, somewhere inside there, they should be doing a, a role play. Every to, single person or is it kind of like five people do it and then other people watch? Um, it just depends on how big your team is. Okay. If you can get through every single person, great. Um, I had over 27, so we couldn't do it you know, every single time. Uh, but we did bring in, and we like to do role play with our top guys as well as some of our bottom guys mm. or gals. All right, so I want to start with what are your most common things to role play? If you were to start doing this, let's, let's talk about three maybe. What are three things that we could role play pretty rhythmically? So the most common are the objections, the mm -hmm. stalls, excuses, and objections. Those are the most common. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that we, I mean, obviously we can't do it here because we don't have the, the paperwork, but you want to role play the price presentation. Mm. That's where the butterflies come in. That's where um, the, the sales reps will start to screw things up. So you really need to role play that. When I go into an organization that's struggling, I'm gonna ask I, that I go into a sales meeting and I don't let them know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna ask that two people, I just need two volunteers. It's like a magician, I just need two people. And uh, people, when you don't tell them what, you're gonna, what they're gonna be doing, they usually jump up and go, yeah, me, me, me. And so I'm going to say, hey, you're the customer and you're the rep. I need you to go out and get the paperwork of the last job you sold. And they'll run out and get it and say, I want you to role play your price presentation. So is there, what would we have to do to actually try that? Like, can I just give you a price or like what would, if it was, if we were to be able to do that in this podcast, could I just say it's a $19,000 roof and could you do it? Or is there more details that you would need to like... Role play well, we do uh, good, better, and best. I mean, we can certainly try. Okay. Uh, I, I just did a podcast. 17, where we did 19, it. 21, or something like yeah, that. Could you do I'm, that with me? Can we try? I'm sure we probably could. Okay. Yeah. Chuck, yeah. give me that 17, 19, 21 price presentation. I know you told me this is the one thing I'm not supposed to do. <laughs> so, 17, 19, 21, if you could give me that, or you could have me do it to you, whatever you want to do, but I just want to try some role play. No, so. Um, if we're going to role play the uh, price presentation, what I would do at this moment is I'm gonna take you through what we call a trial close. I wanna bring it down to money. I have to bring it down to money. It doesn't mean it happens every time. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we get somebody that's gonna give us some resistance, which is fine. At least I know where I stand. 
So yeah. once I'm done with that presentation, then I'm going to slide right into it. So I'm guessing that other than the money, that there's no other reason why I couldn't go ahead and get you on the, the uh, production calendar while I'm here. Yeah, I, uh, I just, ooh, here's Yvonne. Yeah, I'm just, I need to talk to my wife. So my, yeah, my wife. Uh, if your wife isn't here, I did a, I did a horrible okay. job. <laughs> all right, all right. So you want to have both of them, okay. Yeah, but that's all right. Yeah. I mean, it, it happens. Let's just say that I, I'm in that situation. I, I apologize, my wife wasn't, I mean, she's out right now. Okay, so typically I wouldn't even give you a price. Okay. You know, right. uh, I would have already told you that, hey, uh, I'm going to go through the, uh, the, the inspection. I'm going to do some measurements. We always get, uh, you know, the, the satellite measurements. It's going to take a couple hours to get back. When's a good time that I can come back and meet with both you and your wife? So mm. Typically, that's how this okay, would work. Let's, all right. Now I'll just be me and my wife. We're here. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it looks good to me. Wife, what, what do you got? Well, uh, yeah, it's pretty solid. I ultimately was thinking about getting two or three people in here. Is it is that normal for like different having a couple other roofing companies? I mean, that's totally up to you if you want some other roofing companies. But if I can show you a price that's affordable, is there any reason why you wouldn't want to go ahead and get put on the the uh, production calendar? How long is it? How long is the calendar? How long is the calendar? Well, I mean, we're booked out right now is there a date that you're you have in mind yeah we were kind of looking at like march 31st is the time where we were thinking about maybe try like we wanted to do it early in the year okay and so you know if i was able to do that i mean we're really backed up right now yeah. and so if i was able to do that so what you just did was gave me a buying question yes and i'm glad that you did this because not too many sales reps get to see this yeah because most sales reps would say, yeah, 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 we can do it on March 31st. Yeah, no problem. And the homeowner looked at him and said, good, we got three other people coming out. But we really liked everything that you had to say. Mm. But you threw me the buying question. I'm going to reverse it. Because if a sales professional, and going through top rep, you'll learn how to do this. So as soon as we see that buying question come through, we're going to answer that question with a question. Okay. So when you say, uh, can we get this thing done by March 31st? Yeah, well, I mean, we're really backed up. If you don't mind me asking, what's happening at, at March on the, March 31st? We were, we were just trying to make sure that, like, as much of the summer we had, uh, we wanted to get the house looking kind of nice. So we're trying to, like, have, we've had a number of years now where it just doesn't look really nice outside. We're trying to make it look nice. Okay. And so I'm going to make I'm a... I'm just trying to get it. You know, like if there's some kind of weather or something like that, that there's not more issues. Okay. Yeah, no problem. No problem. And so, you know, I'm going to make a quick phone call. Uh, but if, if this is something that you can afford and mm. uh, this is something that uh, you want to go ahead and move forward with, you know, that because that's what they're going to ask me yeah. when I call them okay. and check on it. So I like this. All right, let's, I'm going to yeah. lock you yeah. down is what I'm going to do. No, I love that. So anytime there's, I, I dig this, anytime there's a buying question, Respond with a buying question, and it's a clo it's, that's a closing question, essentially. Yeah. It's a, you want them to say yes. Right. Yes, I'm willing to do that. So you're doing... I need a so, commitment. You're doing something for me, and I got to do something for you. There you go. Which is just this little commitment. If you want something out of me, I want something out of you. That's right. All right. I like that a lot. Okay, let's do a little role play. I'm going to not do the female voice thing, because that's <laughs> like a lot of work. <laughs> um, but let's do... Maybe let's flip it, and you can coach me a little. Um, okay. If that's okay. Like, uh, let's do, I know a common question is the three, I'm, I'm planning on getting three bids. Okay. And let's say um, I am on my first one. Okay, I'm the first one out, right? Yeah, first okay, one out. Great. So, and ultimately, I think I'm going to be, the, you be the homeowner and I'll be the um, project manager in. Oh, I like this. Yeah, yeah let's right. try this. I, I Honestly, I don't sell roofs. So, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm trying to learn, right? So. I, I do have a goal to sell a roof this year. I've sold a lot of other things, but I, I haven't sold a roof. So ultimately, I want to do that to have okay. more empathy for roofing companies and roofing salespeople. Um, so I'm sure I'm going to do this wrong, but let's try it. That's all right. That's all right. All right. Let's say I've got my three. Yep. You got uh, your good, good, better, good, best. better, best. Yep. And I'm sliding it across the table. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, is... If there's nothing, if we can come to terms on 
uh, price and payment. Is there anything other than that w that would stop you from moving forward today? I mean, as long as you guys can make it affordable. Absolutely. So I've got three prices here. One's with the premium products, mm -hmm. and that's that, that 21. And I know that we talked a little bit about how much you, you liked the look of that product. Okay. Um, and then, of course, the, the 19, which was still, you said, looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then um, that 17, which I wouldn't suggest at this time, but certainly if it's, if it's the biggest issue is price, then we can get it done for that. Okay. Um, which one would you most likely move forward with if we decided to do it? I don't know. We're pretty price conscious. And uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm really looking at the, uh, the 17 right now. I understand totally. Is there a chance that um, if we included some financing in this, like if, if we could break that down into a monthly payment for the next couple of years, um, is that something that you'd be interested in? We'd definitely be interested in the, the, uh, the financing, yeah. Yes. Yeah, basically based on that, there's a price. I wouldn't know. I don't know what it is, but let's say it's uh, $179 a month. Yep. Um, and there's a little bit longer term on that, but we would love to include that in your price. Would you be willing to, um, would you we, be, would you want to do it? We'd be willing to look at it, but we've got, we got two other people coming out. You're the first person that we've seen. Mm. I totally understand. I understand, like based on what you, we talked good. about previously, you mentioned that you've got a lot of things going on with the family and stuff like that. I'd like to make it easy on you. I'm not going to lie. Each one of these is this long. It's like an hour or so. Like it's ultimately out of your time and your 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 husband's time here. Um, I ultimately want to make this easy for you, and it's not really going to be that different of pricing. Mm -hmm. um, we see some people, you know, obviously with um, cheaper material, they can do this. But I'll, I didn't even offer you the cheapest cheapest stuff. Um, I would like to just kind of note that you you would have a lot more time. Um, with those folks, God, oh God. it's not easy. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm Ooh. glad that people get to yeah. see this because it's go not easy. Yeah. Where would I go with this? It's time you rethink roofing. Okay, so Refresh, Repair, Restore is not just spraying oil on a roof and rejuvenating the roof. We go in and we soft wash the roof. We have to get rid of that algae because that algae actually takes root in your shingles and is tearing your uh, shingle apart on a micro level. So we clean that roof. We get it spotless. We do the necessary repairs that need to be done to your roof, and then we rejuvenate it and bring it back to life. Make repairs profitable off of rejuvenation, uglyroof.com. So first, when you're, when you're going through your pricing, yeah. what people do is exactly what you do, and yeah. they're gonna go from the best all the way down to the good. The last yeah. price they're gonna give them is- I'm trying to price anchor. Is that we, not a thing? It, it, well, that's Trust a little me, bit I'm different. I'm not a sales expert, okay? Just but so no, no, you know, no, I'm I, not a sales expert. What people need to see is that 90% no. of salesmen that do a good, better, and best do exactly the way you did. Okay. And the last price you gave them was the good. And the last price is always the one that they're going to choose. It, it just mm. happens that way. Okay. Um, I can't say always. Always is a bad term. But most of the time, they're going to pick the last one that you, okay. you leave them with. So the, when you're doing your good, better, and best, you always want to start with your best. That is the ultimate package. Just the one that everybody wants. Yep. And you have to take them down through each and every piece of and that. And really talk through the details on it. Right. And how about with financing, if I'm including that in this? Would I have wanted to talk about that sooner? Um, you talk about how you mentioned that you offer financing. Yes, we do offer financing if you need it, but then you wouldn't go heavy into it. Right. Okay. And But you also, when you write down that price, you write down the payment. Mm. Uh, you don't always have to talk about the term and how long that's for. It's just, it's the payment. Okay. And so I'm going to go down that, the best, and then I'm going to put down that, that retail payment mm -hmm. or that price and payment. Then I'm going to jump over to the good. And I'm going to talk about this is how we compete with all the contractors in town. Mm -hmm. you know, this is, and I'm going to talk about the, uh, the good and, and how this is what all the other contractors are going to offer you. They're going to offer you this certain type of underlayment, this certain type of fastener, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put that price and that payment down. Mm. Then I'm going to let them know that not long ago, we found that most of, our, most of our clients or most of the people that we have talked to want the best but they want it for a little bit closer as far as the pricing, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the investment of the good, thus 
the better was born. Mm. And let me explain to you that. And what mm. they can see, the way that, that we help our clients lay this out, they see how most of the, the best is inside the good or the yeah. better. And so Ooh, I like we that. lay that down. And when we do that, 80%. I would say I 80% that. will pick that. That framing of most folks are doing this. Yeah. And if it wasn't true before, it's not true. 10,000 Elvis yeah, fans yeah, can't be wrong, right? Yeah, exactly. No, I like that. Most of the folks are doing this. So that's a, that's a, uh, is there anything else that you would kind of mention along those lines of, uh, I'm planning on having three people out like. So here's when, when they say, well, you know what, we've got, uh, we've got a couple other people we have coming out. Yeah. And you did, you, it was nice to see that you conceded first. Yeah. Hey, I get it. I totally understand. Yeah. You know, when you say that you're going to have a couple other people coming out, when, when are these people coming? Yeah. So role play with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the different uh, contractors that are coming out, um, when are they coming out? Uh, so why don't you role play with me? Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll be the, the rep. Okay. okay. Um, so yeah. So I, I, I'm having uh, two roofers come out. And when, do, when, will they, yeah. when will they be here? Um, I haven't actually scheduled those ones yet, but uh, yeah, I was kind of, uh, I'm emailing back and forth with uh, at least one right now. Okay, so we're the first ones that's come out. We're the, the only ones that- Yes, and I, did, I was kind of like, a man, imagine, like I was thinking like okay. next week or something. That's okay, like so that. let's say that both of them are coming out next week. Yes. All right, great. So you'll have all of your estimates by the end of next week. All right, great. Yep, yep. So when, you know, here within the next couple of weeks, when you have all of those estimates, you put them all out on the table, what criteria are you going to use to pick which contractor you're going to go with? Mm, I like that question. Um, I, am, I'm at, I am thinking price is going to be pretty high up there because sure. I, mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to be this expensive. Mm -hmm. But I also am just going to be looking at like, reputation like i i yeah i've read your guys reviews and they're really really good so like ultimately i'm looking at that yeah and then i my main thing is that customer service thing like because we've had you know a couple years ago we had a contractor that kind of uh fucked us over and okay. that's the one thing my husband like is just not interested in that happening again i'm sure so yeah, like correct um that's really important to us. So if there's anything you can do to help guarantee that we won't be high and dry here, like with mm -hmm. this project, that will, we, we're willing to pay a little bit more potentially. Okay, of course. So yeah. what I'm hearing is that it's mostly value that you're, yeah. you're looking for out of all the contractors that you're going to have come out here. Is that right? Definitely value. Okay. Okay. And let me ask you, so if af after you've gone through all those estimates and you feel that, that, uh, you know, Hook Exteriors has the best value. Do you mm -hmm. see? Do you see yourself being a uh, a customer of Hook? Absolutely. Good. Good. Well, I want you to understand one thing, and that's that you're gonna always find somebody that can do it cheaper. The but you're never gonna find somebody that can do it cheaper and still be able to do it right. Mm. Do you remember me telling you about our, uh, our the pledge, our price and value guarantee? How you know if you we can go ahead buy everything today. You can go ahead and invest in everything today and you can still shop us out. And if you found somebody that does exactly what we do and exactly how we do it, that will refund you the difference plus give you a hundred dollars to, to help you with your time on that. Yes. And uh, so do you think that we would put our money where our mouth is if we haven't already done our homework? No, I appreciate that for sure. Okay, great. Great. So let me ask you. So with, if the, the investment is fair, the investment's flexible, that you'd be able to afford it, yeah. what would another contractor have to tell you that we haven't already told or shown you? Huh. When you put it that way, we def I mean, we don't absolutely need to do those. Um, just try to do my due diligence. I don't want to be irresponsible. Okay. So it looks like you guys are ready to go. Why don't we go ahead and just get everything taken care of right now? And you let me know if you find somebody that can do exactly what we do, exactly how we do it, and they can do it for less. All right. All right. Yeah. So that's how it's, I'm going to take them through that process. Yeah. And I have contractors say, oh, man, that'll never work. It's like, just try it once. Well, here's, here's my thing, too. Is like, I, think, I think when it comes down to is like people are not role playing sometimes because they don't have the confidence in themselves yeah. or the sales, the sales leader. And that's a weird thing. 
You yeah. know what I mean? Like, ultimately, it does require someone with confidence on the other side of that role play. Oh, yeah. And that's a tough thing, like as a sales manager, a sales leader, to have that confidence. You so said I, something very important yeah. right there, and I want, I want to repeat this, is that when you're talking about the confidence, a lot of times it's the sales leader that can't do the role play. Mm -hmm. And they expect their salespeople to be able to do the role play. Mm -hmm. That is a huge problem. Because we don't want to be seen as like a, you know, like a weak, like we don't want them to like critique our, yeah. our role play. Yeah, the, the sales leader doesn't, doesn't put in the work that's needed, Yeah, and, but they expect the other, the, their team to put in the work. And I, I guess part of it is like potentially you have to open yourself up for criticism and allow feedback on the yeah. other side. You is do. That, is you have that to be somewhat it? vulnerable, yeah. That's tough. And I mean, like, think about it. Like, we just talked to somebody downstairs. We're at SRC Summit right now. Shout mm -hmm. out. Um, but there was somebody downstairs that said, we don't have a sales leader yet. We have five sales guys. Yep. But we do not have a sales leader. So ultimately, like, if somebody's in that position, it is the owner that needs to be doing this, correct? That's right. If it's not, you know, and ultimately, they were usually pretty good at sales. It's kind of like just being honest with yourself. And I mean this in, like, the way of, like, that you're good. It's okay. You're not cocky. You're just good. You have a company. You sold those five reps I'm working for you. You've sold some stuff. Yeah. You've been over one million. You're okay. You're going to be, you need, it's better to be imperfect and do these role plays on a regular basis than being artificially humble and saying, I'm not good enough or like, copping out like it's not going to be useful to your guys right you know when um, back when when i was still a sales manager i had 27 of my own mm -hmm. and then i worked with all the other locations so in all it was like 78 mm -hmm. i had to be better than every one of them mm -hmm. and it was it was late nights trying to make sure that when when i traveled to that location i mean when you travel to uh, our, our, uh, our, our Tennessee location or even Michigan, I mean, these guys are good. Mm -hmm. um, the guys in my location were some of the best. And to come in and, and to get that respect from them, they knew that I had to be twice as good as them. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are people like Larry Barica and Tim Delaney. And uh, uh, I mean, these are the, some of the best in the country. Mm -hmm. And so as a sales leader, at that level, you have to be able to be at their level or better, and most sales leaders can't do that. Hmm. I'm, tr I'm trying to hype them up. I'm trying to give them, I want them to feel like they, I just don't want you to use your, the fact that you're not where you want to be for inaction. That's what I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, cause that's the thing is like, just cause you're imperfect does not mean you have an excuse to not do this. That's right. When it comes down to you know trying to find business in the winter when when the storm's over when there's no fresh damage to work we'll go back to Hill Trace we'll track down a swath that you know most contractors haven't had the opportunity to go out and, and address yet because they're so busy chasing the big storm you know, as long as we've got a date within reason we can chase that storm we can pick up jobs we can pick up leads you know, I, you know uh, some of your some of your sales reps that may not be the best in the company may be better sales managers, sales leaders, as long as they're going to do it right. Yeah. Uh, they're doing it for all the right reasons. We've seen some of that, that it's like, hey, you're, you're a good salesperson, mm -hmm. but I think you'd be a better sales leader. And they come over, they have more fun, they like it more, they understand what mm -hmm. is, is uh, expected of them and then they understand the role play mm -hmm. they can role play okay you know they can still get in there and, and mix it up with some of the better sales reps I love that so let's do a little role play back and forth you said another place where you sometimes see this being useful is actually at the door yeah so can we try that back and forth then I'm gonna have you go first because I, okay. I certainly don't think I have this one down so um, I'm behind the door I'm a homeowner so can I'm gonna you? I'm gonna pull up I'm gonna park uh, a lot of times we try to park on the, the street or we park in the driveway. We pull back a little bit because we don't want to be right on mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the uh, door there. And I have 30 seconds to get out of my car. I'm just going to grab my phone or my iPad and I'm going to uh, get out of the door. I already know that the ring doorbell is recording me. Ideally, what are you wearing? 
Uh, so at that point, I'm usually wearing uh, blue jeans and a uh, polo shirt with a, a logo on it. And the only any, thing like tool, tool belt or any weird stuff? Not right off the bat. Like no, okay. Yeah. Uh, right. When we do our inspection, it's required. Okay. And so I'm going to walk briskly to the door. I'm going to have a nice smile on my face. I may even, you know, wave. If I see that they have a ring doorbell, yeah. I may even kind of wave because uh, I know they're watching me. Yeah. It, it went off on their phone. So I'm going to walk um, briskly to the door. I'm going to knock on the door. I'm going to take a step back oh. or ring it. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? Good. Tim? Yes. Tim, my name's Chuck. I'm here with, with uh, Hook Exteriors for our 2 o'clock appointment. Is now still a good time to spend the next 60 to 90 minutes with me? Yes. Great. Is I forgot it a, this is at this time. Okay. But is, yes, is yes, now it's, a, yeah, it's fine. No, it is yeah. good right now? Okay, yeah. great. And uh, is it okay where I parked? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. And so uh, I'd like to come in. Is it okay if I go ahead and put uh, uh, booties on, our, on, on my feet? I want to yep. make sure that I don't track anything in or out of your house. A absolutely. Very nice. Thank you. Awesome. Do you have a uh, kitchen table that I can set up at real quick? Yes, absolutely. Oh, it's awesome. So we're going to get to the kitchen table. We're going to do some uh, small talk. Yep. Um, and once that small talk starts to die down, then I'm going to hit you with the uh, entry and warm-up statement. So, Tim, you know, let me ask, you know, did the, did the people on the phone, did they, uh, did they cover what to expect from me today? Um, we just got a little bit of it. I'll, I'll be honest, it was pretty brief. Okay, no problem. You know, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you some questions. Yeah. But then I'm going to have you show me around the, uh, around the inside of the house to show me any concerns that you have. Okay. okay. If you, do you have any leaks? No, but I have all this, like, kind of browning on the, on the popcorn ceiling in a couple different places that I'm a okay. little concerned about. We'll take a look at that. Then uh, I'm going to jump up into your attic. Do you have attic access? Yes, it's gross up there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I'm, I'm used to that. I'm going to jump up into your attic. I'm going to do a full attic inspection. Mm -hmm. When I come back down, I'm going to have you walk me around the outside of the house to kind of show me why I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I'm going to jump up on your roof. I'm going to do a full roof inspection, uh, complete with about 60 to, to 80 photos. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. take a 4K video so I can bring that roof down to you. Mm -hmm. Then when uh, I do come back down, then I'm going to share a little bit about our company and a little bit about the, the solution that we have. But most importantly, I'm going to leave you a price that's good for 30 days. You know, is that, is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So I have a question for you. So let's leave it at that one at that one. I like, I like, I really appreciate what you said there. My question to you is like, a lot of roofing companies don't do that, that attic. Oh, very few of That's them. That's not a question. But I guess <laughs> what I'm really getting at is, what's the trade off here with the, the amount of time spent with this level, this comprehensive mm -hmm. kind of roof quote versus what maybe homeowners would we come to expect, which is the, the kind of cursory top level um, glance. I mean, I'm just, I'm kind of like saying it in a negative way, but like that, that really kind of like just looking at the top of the roof and maybe even just a drone, because I've seen that lately too. Right, so you have to, we, we look at everything of, how can we do this differently for, than everybody else? Mm -hmm. um, if you have to do it with a drone, fine. Mm -hmm. Do it with a drone. I will tell you that you do lose some credibility. I know there's going to be some upset people when I say this. You will lose credibility if you throw a drone up. Hmm. Um, and what about go ahead. Uh, inspection, getting up there, and then a drone separately? Um, now, if you do a drone separately, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay, a question about the role play there. Like, how long would you make that? In a, in a, I kind of cut, made it abbreviated. But I was how, done, so it Okay, that was the whole long. thing. Yep. So you, in general, like, it can be as short as, like, three minutes yeah. to do that part. And they're kind of, you're kind of talking through, in, in a, you know, if you get in a rhythm of this, you're talking through the things you're doing while you're right. doing them. That's kind of how you'd do it. Yeah. And you'd have your people do it. Okay. Right. Chuck, what's the, the, the percentage of that power hour that's role play? And what, what other components are there to a power hour? So remember, you only have an hour. The most important piece of the power hour is we look at the day prior. We go through every appointment. That should take you about 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. to go through every appointment. How did it go? Why didn't you sell it? And then, uh, then we go into a training piece. So either, we're either going to train or we're going to go into a role play. So it's totally up to you. But it's, it's a half hour. Mm. Yeah. Half hour, all right. And I guess one little follow-up to that is like, if I was 
trying to train to be a roofing salesperson, how long do you think it would take for me to get up and actually sell a roof, like it, me as an individual? So you're looking at about three weeks to be able to sell a roof. Okay. I have gotten so many companies, they're like, oh man, we're a month, two months, and I'm like, I don't even know what to do with myself after yeah. three weeks. Um, we get our sales reps up and running within three, three and a half weeks. It just depends on them, their learning curve, and how fast they pick it up. We will not allow them out. It's not just in a matter of time. We will not allow them to, uh, to go into the field unless they can role play everything all the way through flawlessly. Wow. I love that. Um, would you send them out on difficult leads or cream puff leads right away? Well, you try to send them out on the easiest ones you can. Yeah, because you're trying to get their confidence up a little bit. You are, uh, and that's why we also, for the first couple of times, uh, a, uh, another sales rep or a sales manager will go with them. Mm. Uh, and if it's a sales rep, then they split it. If it's a sales manager, they get the whole thing. But we want to make sure that we're not wasting appointments either. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you doing that. Roofing sales role play, incredibly important in your organization. I hope you're doing it on a regular basis. And I really appreciate you spending the time with me. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, what's the dot com and what's the call to action for the event here? Just go to uh, uh, topreptraining.com, topreptraining.com. All of our events will be on there. Just pick the event that you want to go to. And uh, I mean, it, you know, every, uh, every event we do have some promo codes. Uh, if you use my name, all caps, it'll, it'll get you $100 off this next event. Awesome. Chuck Doki, everyone. And uh, the podcast is put on by hookagency.com. Hook Agency all over social. Rate, review the podcast. And like and subscribe on the video. Bye. All right. Yeah, I'm talking about Mountain Dew.